Hello, this is Chris, and uh, finally we're back with some programming tutorials. Um, I think there have uh, been some people waiting for something new from me in this arena. Um, I've been, uh, again, going back and forth between Unity and Flixel and Hex, but now Hex Flixel is out. Er, well, it's been out for a while, but I wasn't quite into it before, but it's much cleaner and a bit more powerful now. I think they're on like version 3 now. So um, let's get back into Flixel. Um, I've uh, recently gotten back into it myself, and I've even made a little game, which I can show you here. Um, it's not much, but, uh, uh, you know, it's it's something. <laughs> and I think maybe it'll be interesting for other people to want to make games with this. Um, this is the preloader. For some reason, when I run it once, it stays at the screen. So if, it, if that happens with you, just build it again. And it should start up normally. Or not. <laughs> Uh-oh. This is a bad time to have problems already. Um, let's see. What is going on? How about if I put it on debug? Okay, now it works. <laughs> I wonder what's up with that. I, I'm going to have to look into that later. But um, yes, here it is. Um, I just made this quick little platformer. And uh, if we quick go, here it is. Um, just a very simple little platformer here. Um, got a double jump and some animated sprites. And uh, yeah. Um, a little bit of parallax there as well. And it is really... Oh man, I need a new computer. It's having trouble running this simple game while screen recording. But uh, yeah, I think uh, with this first tutorial, I'll show you how to make something simple like this, but uh, maybe also add some, uh, you know, pickups, some power ups, and whatnot. You know, maybe you won't start with a double jump, but you have to, you know, you know, get it later. And, uh, you know, you can make like a Metroidvania or something. <laughs> you know, something cool like that. But yeah, uh, I would like to show you how to make something kind of like this. So, um, in this first video, I just want to show you how to get things set up. Um, first, let's get Hexflixel. And I think we can start here. Um, they show you how to install everything from the very beginning, installing Hex. Uh, OpenFL and Hexflixel, and uh, I'm just gonna leave this to you to do. It's really easy. Um, uh, I think the only snag might be is if you have ever installed Stencil, uh, Stents, uh, which is kind of like a, a game maker kind of. Uh, I don't know what to call it. I guess it's a program, a package. Um, if you've ever installed Stencil, you might have some issues reinstalling, um, uh, yeah, because you're going to be reinstalling Hex, you you might run into some conflicts, but it's pretty easy to solve. Um, this is a little bit, <laughs> uh, convoluted, but if you go to openfl.org, I believe, yes, .org, and in the forums, if you just type stencil here, stencil, there is someone who had a similar problem. The installation of stencil broke my OpenFL Lime installation. You can just look at these. I think it just involves deleting a, fi a file, uh, your hexlib file in your user's uh, folder. And I think there's also another Android file that uh, I had to delete to get things working correctly. Um, 
and uh, yeah, just delete those, and then come back, and then you'll reinstall Hex, OpenFL, Lime. Uh, if you want to get it running on Android, um, install the Android SDK and all that. All of that information is in here, so uh, <laughs> um, uh, I won't go into detail on that now. So once you have Hex Flixel and Hex and OpenFL and Lime and all that installed, it's a little bit of work, but it's easy. Um, uh, next, we're going to need a place to, you know, make our code. I recommend Flash Develop. It's awesome, uh, and it's easy. Uh, we got links here. Uh, go there, download it, install it. It's simple. It does everything for you. And then um, also what you'll need in this is an image editor. Um, I'll be using GIMP. Um, it's a free image editing uh, sof software. <laughs> um, I think if you, it's like GIMP.org or something. Uh, let's see, yeah. Um, it's good. Um, if you're used to Photoshop, there's ways to make it like Photoshop. Um, and uh, although it's a little bit weird to get used to, but if you're willing to just sit down and learn it or bend it to your needs, it's uh, plenty powerful to do anything that you want. So uh, that's what I'll be using, but you can use anything you want. Also, um, I'll be using a program called Pickle Editor. Um, this is, this does cost money, but I really like it. Um, um, uh, it's really good for making like tiled things. It has a uh, sort of interface for making uh, animated uh, things. It for like these, you know, background format things. It, it's great. Um, I, I really like it. You can get a free trial here if you want. Um, and yeah, it has all, all sorts of other things uh, that just make it handy to use. Also, I'd like to say another cool thing is like if you look at this pattern here, um, although I guess maybe they didn't use it for this, but it has like things like mirroring X and Y if you need to make like, I don't know, it just has lots of neat tools. There's some kind of buggy things about it or things that need to be tweaked, but I, I think they're open to um, suggestions. So uh, yeah, give it a try. So I'll be using this uh, Pickle editor and GIMP to make my, my graphics, but you can use whatever you want. And then, once we're getting to making maps and our, we, using our tiles that we designed and graphics and all that, I recommend Ogmo Editor for our and all of these things are easy to install. Um, if you're having trouble uh, installing these, um, maybe ask <laughs> the people who make the pro the program that you're having problems with, because uh, uh, or get a little more acquainted with how computers work. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, here's Ogmo ed Editor. Um, it's a you know, uh, you know, for making tile-based games. Um, and it's good. Um, there's another one called Dame. I used to be quite fond of Dame Editor. I wonder. If, uh, yeah, this one's pretty good, but uh, so after a while, I think I like the workflow of Akmo a bit better. But I don't know. Maybe you prefer Dame. In the end, they output uh, XML or. Um, uh, what do they call the uh, the comma separated what shimmerjig things? <laughs> um, anyways, they output the Im uh, information to that hold their maps, and um, uh, yeah, and uh, you can use either one, uh, whichever one you feel comfortable with. But in this, I'll be using Agma. So, uh, lastly. Um, I just want to show you with, um, let's uh, close all that out, with um, Hexflixel, there are some demos that you can 
uh, look at to see what I can do. You can either click the demos here, and um, you know if you, there's something that looks like you want to do, like um, let's see, there's uh, um, flicksteroids. Um, it has a little sample here, and um, you know you can you know play with it and whatnot. Uh, oh, oh, is it arrow keys? Oh God, I hate arrow keys. I am a WASD person. Uh, okay, well, anyways, <laughs> um, you can look at it, and then you can also find, uh, you know, um, let's see. Oh, the source code with this button here. But there's another way to look at the source code. So um, I just want to show you real quick how to um, uh, how to easily access a lot of these uh, sample demos. Um, so let's say you have uh, a folder that you're working in. So I have this 2014 folder that has all my uh, recent things, and actually some of the most of these are the demo projects <laughs> uh, for Hexflixel, and also I was trying out Hexpunk. I think I prefer Flixel. Um, but what you want to do is if you right cl sh hold shift and right click on the folder that you want to put your project folder in, you shift right click, and then you can open a command window here. And uh, since you, at this time, you should have already installed uh, everything and you should know about some of these commands, but um, uh, you can type flixel create and here we have a list of all of the demo demo projects and uh, then it asks you to enter a number or the name of the demo you want to create so let's say we want to do flicksteroids so just type 3 hit enter it creates it and then when we look in the folder there it is oh wait no no <laughs> there it is it's flix flicksteroids um, and then uh, we have flash develop installed so we can just double click this flash develop folder or project file and wait a little bit oh okay oh there it goes and here it is uh, with all the source code and everything inside of it so yeah we can just uh, build it and test it out hopefully this time it doesn't lock up on the preloader which I don't know that's the first time it's done it twice in a row oh okay good it works this time around and uh, there we go we have Flixsteroids running built on our own uh, uh, you know computer so yeah, that's how you can you can take a look at a lot of the demo files like that, and uh, that's a good way to kind of learn how people use Hexflixel. But um, we'll be going through a lot of the basics in this, so that you can maybe better understand what you're looking at when you look at these uh, source at this source code. Okay, so. Um, that will be it for this introductory video. Um, I think this uh, will be quite uh, informative, hopefully, for you guys. <laughs> um, if you uh, want, please comment below things that you'd like to see. Um, and uh, Or, if I made any mistakes, which I probably did, uh, also comment that below and maybe I can put an annotation on the video. So... I will see you in the next episode in which I will go over making a new project and we'll do kind of a little hello world and maybe start by putting a player in and moving it around or something. So I will see you then. Goodbye.